I've got a camera that I would like to share with you guys in this video, and this is the Sony RX1R Mark II. Now, this is a compact camera that features a full-frame sensor and a fixed 35mm f2 lens. I was in New York last week working on the next two videos for the Artist Series, and I had the opportunity to borrow this camera for that trip. And before I return it, I want to do a review because I am completely blown away. I think in terms of just having a still camera that excels for street photography and general usage, I don't think you can find a better camera right now in the market. And that's a big thing, I think. Um, you know, for me, the RX1 series, and this is actually the third version that Sony has released, hasn't appealed to me that much because I knew the video capabilities were slightly lacking. And then that combined with the really high price tag, it's $3,300 US is about the street price. And you have a fixed focal length lens of 35 millimeters, which is a focal length I'm not really used to working with. And so it's never really been on my radar. But after shooting on this for a while, I have completely changed my mind on these. This is an incredible camera. The things that drew me to this, I mean, I think the big feature on here is the lens, believe it or not. Uh, the lens is absolutely beautiful. There's a lot of versatility and range that you get out of this lens. 35 millimeter is a good focal length for street photography because it's not super wide, but it's also not super tight. So you can get enough in, you can do a lot of zooming with your feet, as we say, and this is capable of a lot of coverage. Um, the fact that you have a 42 megapixel sensor in here, I guess if you had to crop, you definitely have room to do it if you need to get in tighter on something. I mean, what this won't replace is if you do uh, sports photography or something where you're gonna need a telephoto lens, it probably won't work. Um, the other problem that you're gonna have is if you're doing interiors or something where you would need a super wide angle, you can get around that by taking multiple images and then stitching them together as a panorama in Photoshop or Lightroom. But you know, for all intents and purposes, it's really not that bad a focal length. And F2 is wide enough to give you a lot of nice depth of field. If you want a really shallow depth of field and you want soft details in the background or be able to remove your subject from the background. And as you stop down to like about F5, 6 or so, uh, it sharpens up really quite nicely. And I've been really impressed with this. Another interesting feature on this camera is the, what Sony calls a variable optical low pass filter. Now what that means is typically uh, cameras, especially when you have higher resolution and you're gonna have a lot of details and a lot of sharpness when it's paired with a good lens like you have here, you're gonna have some artifacts that are less than desirable and typically we call these aliasing or moiré. And aliasing occurs when you have um, you know, a, a hard edge to something Thing, like let's say a rooftop against a sky and the edge is at a diagonal line and rather than being a smooth line you see a jagged edge on it so that's typically known as aliasing. Moiré occurs when you have uh, let's say you're shooting somebody and they've got a pattern on their shirt or you see like the threads and the texture and what you're going to see are these dark lines that kind of wave up and give an effect that you typically don't want and so typically cameras in the past have been designed with a low pass filter over the sensor and that has helped to curb some of those artifacts that you don't want and what Sony have done recently, a lot of camera manufacturers have taken those off and just saying, okay, you may have a problem with alias singer more that you're going to have to deal with later. What Sony have done is they've introduced what they're calling a variable optical low pass filter. So what this does, is it allows the user to control the low pass filter electronically. And so there's three settings in here. There's off, standard, and then high. And what that does is it controls the voltage that's being sent to the sensor. And in particular, there's a liquid crystal layer on there. And so it allows you to prioritize if you turn it off. Off, a really sharp image, or if you are afraid you're going to get more A or something like that, you can start to vary that voltage to get rid of those things and to prioritize losing those artifacts over extreme detail. It's really quite nice to have. Initially, when I started looking at this, I thought, well, this doesn't make much sense from a photographer's perspective because those are things that will occur in an image that you're not exactly looking for, particularly with a street photography camera where you're in the heat of the moment and trying to get just that right shot. One thing that is cool though that they have incorporated in here is there is a bracketing function for the low pass filter as well. So much like you can bracket for exposure or you could bracket for white balance, you can actually bracket so it'll take three different shots and each one of them will be at a different low pass filter setting. So that's kind of cool if you're doing a headshot or a portrait and maybe you have texture and clothing or something or you're doing a landscape where you're afraid you're going to get that effect. You can bracket your exposures to make sure that you have it at all settings. So I thought that was a really nice touch from Sony on that. 
Honestly, though, I think that variable low pass filter and things like that are a little bit more so they have something to market, which is fine, but that's not what impressed me the most about this camera. So what I want to do is I want to rearrange here a little bit so we can get in tight and I can show you how this thing works. One of the things I really like about the RX1 is the way it's laid out and the way it handles, and it feels a lot like using an old 35 millimeter camera, and mainly because the way you're going to adjust the aperture is actually on a ring that's on the lens. And so we're at f2 right now. If I want to stop down to f8, you simply turn the turn the aperture ring, and this works a lot like an old 35 millimeter camera. And if you're doing street photography, it's a really natural feel, I think, particularly if you ever shot on 35 millimeter. On the front of the camera, you have your focus mode selection, so you can go single, continuous, direct manual focus, or manual focus. If you've never used a Sony, direct manual focus allows you to make adjustments when the focus is locked in. So if it didn't quite grab the point you wanted in focus, you can adjust it manually from the lens. And that's particularly useful for things like macro, for instance. Um, on the top of the camera, you have your viewfinder, which I'll show you in a second. You have a hot shoe in the middle, which is really nice. Uh, you have your mode selection dial. You have your power on and off and shutter release and your exposure compensation. And I really like that the exposure compensation is a dial that I can physically turn. That, that's really nice to have. On the back of the camera, you have um, buttons for navigating the overly complicated Sony menu system and other things. But what's really cool about this too, and Sony have done a really good job with this on a lot of their camera models, is you have a C1 button up here, and that's a custom function button, so you can assign that to whatever you want. And then you also have another one down here, it's the trash can on the back. Now what's really cool though, is when you dig into the, the operating system on here, I can actually customize pretty much any button on the camera, and it's a really nice feature to have. And there's kind of two layers to that. You can customize things in the playback mode, so if you're reviewing images, and you can also customize buttons in shooting mode. And I've only had this camera, been using it a week, so I really haven't dug too much into that. Uh, but for instance, I did set up the C1, so if you wanted to bracket for the uh, low pass filter stuff, I set that up to turn on low, low pass filter bracketing. So that's a really easy way to get there, and that's really nice. And you probably can't tell from looking at this, but if you've ever shot on a Sony, really all these buttons are customizable, including the four regions of the control ring that you can press. So you can customize anything. And I have done that on my RX100 Mark IV because I go back and forth between shooting video and shooting stills quite a bit. And so it's really nice to be able to have things set up a certain way if I need to get to white balance really quickly, or if I need to get to autofocus and manual focus, turning that on and off. Or if I need, to, I've even sh set, set it up so the center ring back here is the video record button because I can't stand this little tiny one that they hide that's hard to press so I make that the video on and off it's really nice to have and so I really love the layout on this also the viewfinder you can pop it up by just pressing the little release there and it brings it up. Now there is an optional eye cup that you can use on here and I didn't get it with this camera so I haven't used it. I really didn't feel like I needed it and it really is built that well and that solidly and you know I, it used to be you'd look into the electronic viewfinder and you'd see the pixels and it was really annoying and hard to use. Not the case anymore. Sony have really streamlined this and this works a lot like the RX100 Mark III and IV but it's actually designed even a little better because they have a little more room to make it slightly larger so that's basically the, uh, the layout functions and uh, how you use the RX1 arm. So I want to talk about video on the Sony RX1R for a second. Now, right now I'm shooting video with the Sony RX1R and it has some nice features in it that make it very useful for video. Now the audio did change because I'm using the mics that are on the camera right now, but it does have image stabilization in it and I've actually got this mounted to my Gorillapod and I'm holding it out at arm's length. The 35 millimeter focal length is a little tight if you're trying to do vlog style stuff like this, but I did want to put it on this to show you that you do have image stabilization included as well as phase detection autofocus. Now I didn't mention this earlier and this works really well for stills as well. There are 399 phase detection autofocus points and so this makes it pretty easy if you did want to do a vlogging type of thing on here assuming your arm is long enough and you have a <laughs> in a monopod or something to stick it on beyond that, you can actually record yourself. And even though I don't have a monitor, I, I'm going to trust that it's keeping my face in focus right now. And the autofocus capabilities on this camera are very nice. Now, I have not shot on the RX1R Mark I, the predecessor, but I think one of the complaints that a lot of people had on that camera is that the autofocus capabilities were a little bit slow and a little bit of hunting and seeking going on with the lens. I have not had any trouble with this. It focuses quickly. I would like a touch screen and I've been harping on Sony and just about every camera I've reviewed from them that it would be nice to be able to just be able to touch your focus point and have the camera know to focus there. You don't have that on this. You're still going to have to deal with Sony's autofocus system. But having said that, as you can see here, 
I mean, it's taking my whole arm to hold this camera up and I'm not controlling any focus at all and it's staying in pretty good. So anyway, so it is pretty nice. Now what I want to show you though is even though these camera microphones are not that great, we do have a hot shoe and we do have an audio input. So I'm going to go ahead and reconfigure. And now I have my Rode video mic mounted to the top of the camera and plugged in. So you are able to get good video with this camera. Now there are a few features that are missing that are a little bit curious. Uh, the first one is the ability to do 4K video. Now 4K video is, I mean, I can live without that. That's not the end of the world. However, 4K would be a nice addition to this camera, and I'll tell you why. It's because you have a fixed 35 millimeter lens. Now, if you're outputting to 1080 HD, which is standard HD footage, 4K is a much bigger picture. So this would allow you to crop in and kind of compensate for the fixed focal length on the lens. And that's a feature that I think would be a very welcome addition. Now, the other feature that's missing that is very puzzling is the lack of a log profile, like S-Log2 or S-Log3, that's Sony is known for. These profiles record a very flat picture, but they're really essential when you're going to do any kind of color grading in post-production. This camera does not have those, and that is a big deal for me that those are missing. Now, you can cheat around that a little bit, which I'm doing here, and you can actually do just a color profile and turn the contrast all the way down, the saturation all the way down, and the sharpness all the way down, then you can control those later. It's not as seamless in your workflow as being able to use an S-Log profile, plus if you're blending this with other Sony cameras for your footage that would be really useful to have. So video is like, they got it almost there, but didn't follow through all the way. And that kind of, you see Sony do a lot with, with various cameras. Sorry, holding this on a Gorillapod wears my arm out. So um, anyway, that's another thing. It's the 35 millimeter lens just for vlogging stuff is gonna wear you out, but it could be done. I wanna take a second and give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at audible.com. Audible.com is the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with over 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodic. I am currently working my way through Sally Mann's memoirs called Hold Still and it is narrated by Sally herself. Highly recommended. And if you want to check this book out, I would head over to audible.com. They have a deal right now for Art of Photography viewers where if you go over and sign up for their service, you will get your first month absolutely free. So if you want to go check out Sally Mann's Hold Still with no charge, what you want to do is use the following link. You want to head over to audiblepodcast.com slash AOP. That is audiblepodcast.com slash AOP. That'll let them know I sent you and you will get your first month absolutely free when you sign up. So once again, I want to give a special shout out to the folks at audible.com for sponsoring another episode of the Art of Photography. So that's the Sony RX1R Mark II. And as I mentioned earlier, this one is on loan to me and I'm having a very difficult time returning this because I've had such a great time shooting on it this week. I think that if you're in the market for the ultimate street photography camera, at least out of the stuff that I've had experience with and tried, um, this is probably one of the best, if not the best. Um, it is missing a few features as we talked about, mainly in the video department, but they're not deal breakers. It still shoots really nice video. But if you're looking for stills and you want something that's gonna shoot uncompressed, raw, 14-bit images, this is your, your camera, and this lens is absolutely the selling point. It has a lot more range and versatility than I suspected that it would, and I've just really been impressed with this camera. I think it is outstanding. Now, the price on this will put most people out of the bidding here right away, and this goes for over $3,000 US, but when you consider, if you're comparing this image quality-wise to something like the A7R II, which is a bigger camera, and you're gonna pay over $3,000 for that, and you don't even have a lens in the picture at that point, and this one has a lens included, I think that it makes sense when you put it up on the higher end Sony stuff. But uh, anyway, I think it is absolutely fabulous. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos that we do here. I'm very sad now because I've got to go return this, but I will see you guys in the next video. Later.